So I'm just going to briefly discuss the book and what it does. Um, obviously it covers a wide range of subjects, not just climate change. Climate change just happens to be the uh, top thing we think of when we talk about ecological disaster. But to me, mass extinction, which is not unrelated to global heating, is by far a bigger problem. Not just because it threatens to collapse the food chain, but because the life of other species is a value in itself. Um, ocean acidification, destroying um, the life in the seas. Um, alternative energy sources, how are we going to solve the problem? Um, you know, because the entire energetic basis of our civilization is threatened. The melting of the Arctic, which for some mysterious reason moves me more than anything, um, how are we going to stop that? Because if we lose the Arctic, we lose something that has existed for the entirety of the human experience. What brings all this stuff together is what I call in the book a planetary sensibility. This is what I'm trying to fashion. And I'm not the first person or the only person to talk in these terms about uh, the planetary and its uh, uh, role in our, our modern political dilemmas. Um, uh, Paul Gilroy spoke uh, and wrote in the 1990s about the necessity of what he called planetary humanism and in a way this was uh, an attempt to cut across um, partly uh, axed on the issue of uh, our ecological crisis but not just that, to cut across the demands of um, ethnic absolutisms, national boundaries you know, the demands of identity, to say essentially that uh, we are all in it together, but we really all have to be in it together um, in the sense that we have to work to undo the ongoing legacies of race making, colonialism, segregation, um, class, of course, uh, all of these structures of domination which are still with us today and which have an important role in climate change. I'll come back to that. Achille Mbembe also talks about planetary thinking and uh, talks about this in the context of uh, the success of social movements and how uh, social movements need to adopt a planetary sensibility of, of type, which uh, would involve uh, taking the anti-colonial revolution to its ultimate conclusion, which is um, to, among other things, radically reconfigure the balance and structures of power, of trade, of resources, um, of political dominance, of militarism in the world. So it's not just about, uh, you know, transferring some wealth from the global north to the global south. There's also uh, the need to um, uh, reorganize completely how we organize the energy system. Um, and so a planetary sensibility uh, cuts through all of the um, arbitrary boundaries which make us misunderstand the climate crisis. One of the ways in which we misunderstand the climate crisis is when we talk about overpopulation. Many mainstream environmentalists say that there is a problem with overpopulation. Um, and generally speaking, what is meant by that is that uh, population in third world countries is growing too fast. Now, this doesn't make any sense at all, because uh, the places where population is growing fastest are also the places which consume the least resources and the least energy. Um, their contribution to the carbon footprint is not the big problem. Now, if it so happens that the uh, living conditions and lifestyle of a child raised in Afghanistan were raised to the level of a child raised in San Francisco, then we would be in a position of having to talk about overpopulation. But really the problem is, uh, on one level it's consumption, um, but it's really about throughput. And it's about the way in which production is organized. It's about the way in which, uh, for example, agriculture is organized. We have these big monocultural plantations eating into wildlife territories destroying biodiversity which is threatening the food chain uh, and uh, threatening to accelerate the sixth mass extinction. Um, a, a mega phase change in micro phase time as I like to say. Um, there's something else when we think about the planetary um, and its uh, relation to our thinking. Um, when there's a wildfire 
in Australia or somewhere like that, uh, or in North America or in uh, Brazil. Whatever the cause of the wildfire, it could be uh, the result of uh, sort of arson by agricultural interests in Brazil, it could be uh, spontaneous, it could be accelerated by climate change. Uh, it's easy to think that that's something that's happening over there. But because we all live on a planet and share the same atmosphere, it's not. It's happening here. The uh, smoke that is pumped out, uh, not to mention the heat, enters the atmosphere and contributes to climatic changes everywhere. So, um, you know, the wildfires in one part of the planet can actually accelerate wildfires in another part of the planet. Uh, so we need to think about these things in a planetary sense. Um, the last thing I want to say about this uh, is that a planetary sensibility is important for um, our relationship to ourselves, uh, not just individually, but as species. And one of my favorite examples of this is Henry David Thoreau, uh, walking in the mountains of Maine and he's tried to walk to the peak of Mount Katahdin and he's got lost in the fog uh, he's soaked through and sun-dried he's almost out of food he's descending in defeat through what are called burnt lands and suddenly he gazes out and he has this experience of rapture he's seized by rapture he says I stand in awe of my body this matter to which I am bound has become so strange to me I fear not spirits, ghosts, of which I am one, but I fear bodies, I tremble to meet them. What is this titan that has possession of me? Talk of mysteries. Think of our life and nature daily to be shown matter, to come into contact with it, rocks, trees, wind on our faces, the solid earth, the actual world, the common sense. Contact, contact. Who are we? Where are we? This is a flayed encounter with the raw matter of being. It's the raw matter of not just the planet, but the cosmos. And of course, uh, it speaks to the creed of transcendentalism, which was very popular uh, among uh, 19th century radicals. Um, it became an abolitionist creed. Um, uh, Thoreau became a, a, a militant abolitionist um, and uh, an opponent of women's oppression and an opponent of the uh, mistreatment of children indeed a, a comprehensive political radical with a, a, a sort of landscape uh, for liberatory thinking that goes beyond some of our contemporary thinking. So I think planetary sensibility has something to do with transcendence, something to do with thinking far beyond uh, the limits of our contemporary horizon. Um, in that sense, it may be a proto-religious impulse, but uh, no matter the planet and the planetary scale of our existence is important and that's where we need to draw our attention to.